Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Fashion on Air. Today we have got a very special guest. He is Nino Crudel, who has got 25 years of experience in the cloud technology and cyber security. He has been delivering large scale solutions and driving global companies to use technologies in the best and most profitable way. He has also been awarded as the Microsoft Azure MVP since 2006. He he also is an international speaker and author, and he is a well known security geek. in the technology side and uh, this person is very passionate in the IT community and i found him uh, to be the uh, right person to talk about security and uh, all aspects about uh, azure in this podcast and he's currently working as a cloud security expert as well so this is all about our uh, speaker today and uh, all to him i spent many years working inside the integration space uh, especially in the last year i started engaging much more in my research When we think about security, we always think about security as a perimeter. One of the main point for me is uh, first of all container in the integrate uh, mm-hmm. it will be a 100% practical session. Hi Nino, welcome. Hi, hi Hamlita, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice. Thank you for inviting me to this event. <laughs> Thank yes, you so much. Uh, the pleasure is ours you know uh, how is everything at your end how is your uh, uh, research going on and how is your security all about how is your work going on well uh, yes this um um i start uh, i start conducting a lot of research uh, especially in the last 8 uh, months uh, i would say hmm. um um from my i would say from my previous experience i think many people knows my person in the integration space i spent many years working inside the integration space uh, many people knows my person as uh, they call me they used to call me the bistock grinch So oh, wow. I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to work a lot in the integration space, especially mm. using Visto Server. Mm. Um, so that was uh, many years ago. Um, mm. But security has always been uh, very, very, um, very, very crucial topic for me. And in the last period of my career and life, I decided. to engage much more in this topic and this is why in the last uh, uh in the last period especially in the last year I start engaging much more in my research um that's uh, is very interesting because uh is producing a lot of uh, output for me mm-hmm. something that in initially I had a vision uh when we speak about cloud especially for people like uh, it was myself i was yeah. coming from integration so for me i start engaging microsoft azure with service bus uh, and even even tabs and all these uh, azure technologies mm-hmm. and for me the ideas uh, about cloud was actually like um, uh, software as a service or platform mm-hmm. as a service uh, mm-hmm. approach um and you have this feeling about you using azure and cloud technologies uh, you know like uh, i mean pass me the the word is like uh, tools uh, or uh, rapid application development so mm-hmm. using this uh, kind of setting and drag and dropping and and using this and uh, creating this queues everything like that in the cloud everything it looks quite uh, I would say abstract when you mm. look at the cloud. Yeah. But uh, something I discovered during my research is, is I started digging much more and much more uh, inside. So one of the first things I I actually tried to look was uh, that's curious. It was mm. about thinking about okay, everything we do and everything we execute in the cloud uh, is it must be contained by something. Mm. So everything we execute in the cloud actually is just software. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. just bit and byte. Mm-hmm. So if, if at the end uh, um, we we can look about all this technology in the cloud uh, and we can name it uh, thousand of technologies but at the end all this technology actually executed by operating system. Mm. So this is where 
we connect these ideas about uh, operating system, containers, and all this area. So there is something on the bottom which is going to execute this software yeah. in some way. And this is something that starts intriguing my mind. And I start mm-hmm. thinking about, okay, all right. So when we think about security, we always think about security as a perimeter. Yeah. Like, uh, think about... Uh, we, like we think as a human, I think it's something natural for us as a human. When we are in our home, uh, something we think is, uh, okay, let's close the door. Let's mm-hmm. close the windows. Let's close this and this and this. Uh, so uh, I'm feeling protected right now. Mm. Okay, this is because uh, I just close my perimeter. My perimeter around me is just closed, is protect. Mm-hmm. And that is the kind of feeling I always see in, in general people and so on. So what about inside? So mm. the idea is uh, is about thinking about software. We always think about, okay, I developed the web application, right? So I'm using firewall. Mm. So I'm closing doors. I'm closing port. I'm closing everything. I'm doing whatever I can. But... What about uh, what is inside the application? Yeah. Who is actually executing this application? Mm. Who is hosting this application? Who is taking care about that? And that is, I think, the very big point about cloud. Everything we execute inside the cloud is actually owned and hosted mm. and managed by someone else. Right? Yeah. Is it is it something that we most of the time we don't even control? Mm-mm. And that's for me it was the big point to look at. So I started digging more and more about this aspect, and I started looking about some of the attack um, and thinking about is it possible to attack this lower layer in the cloud. So mm. I start investigating much more in that. And I found and I found a way, I found a different way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, one of these is um, what we call reverse shell attack. Okay. So reverse shell attack is a way where the principle is very simple. Mm. <laughs> the principle is that Think about an operating system. You have a Windows operating system or Linux operating system. And mm-hmm. you try to take control about this system in some way, right? So mm-hmm. that's what the hacker is trying to do. So try to attack the system and try to take the control about this system. Okay. So in order to do that, the, the hacker, he, the first thing he, must, he, he need to do is actually get access inside the system. Mm. And to get this access, you actually need to pass a firewall, you need to pass authentication, you need to do a lot of things. That is going to be very complicated for a hacker, very complicated. But what is going to be if the operating system is going to call you? Mm. It's going to be different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and this is actually how reverse shell attack works. Okay. So the way is about... Uh, if you are able to execute uh, a kind of software that is actually able to call you back and say, hey, I'm here, mm. I'm available for you, if you want to k- take control about me, all right? Mm-hmm. So think about the opposite way. I'm not trying as a hacker to hit the system or enter in the system, but it's actually the system calling me, is asking me and telling me, yes, I'm here, you can actually take my control. Mm. And this is how actually reverse shell attack works. So I start um, investigating more and more using PowerShell, JavaScript, uh, .NET framework, other languages, and looking about different techniques. Mm. And in the meantime, also thinking about this concept about containers inside the cloud operating system. So um, I've been able to find uh, some very, very dangerous exploit and falls uh, mm-hmm. uh, in general. And at this point, uh, um, I, I don't want to give too much information on that yeah. because some of these are quite, uh, I would say, <laughs> 
dangerous things. So even okay. people, I don't like people even understand too much about. Uh, mm. uh, but this is something that I'm going to speak uh, and present uh, during my next uh, session and conferences uh, in, in Integrate. Um, I, I like to present in real and show in real to people how actually these attacks uh, are working in real so they can actually see in real how Azure technology can be attacked from a hacker and from mm -hmm. the internal. Um, but to keep this short is, um, my idea was about, okay, I found a way to execute a kind of code, mm. which not even Azure Defender, uh, not Azure Defender, Windows Defender is even able now the, to, to spot, uh, mm -hmm. which is going to create a reverse shell attack. Okay. Um, so starting from there, I start looking about, okay, let me see how many techniques I can find to create a reverse shell attack without getting, uh, uh, I would say, stopped from uh, security or firewalling or, or antivirus or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So I start looking about this research. And I found different way. And I start using this kind of attack in all the Azure technologies. Mm -hmm. So to give you an idea, I've been able to... Uh, attack technologies uh, like uh, a fabric. Mm, okay. So think about people using a fabric, creating mm -hmm. application, delivery application inside a fabric, and um, um, they, they, they. I would say they deploy this application in a fabric without considering that actually this application they execute code. Mm. If they are able to execute code, and if someone a hacker from inside the company or wherever it is, is able to inject this little piece of code inside your application, in the moment you execute this application, a fabric is actually going to open any door to the hacker. Mm -hmm. And actually, you are able to get the control inside the container in a fabric. Uh, same concept uh, is actually almost in many other technologies, like... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've been able to conduct attack uh, on Docker, Docker container, okay. using exactly the same principle. So I develop uh, a Razor application, web mm. application. Mm. I try to inject some of the code. So I simulate an attack from a hacker, okay. which is going, think about a person, or a, this is usually how hackers operate in the company. Mm. They they try to enter in the company, right? To get hired mm. from the company. It can be yeah. usually is like a, they look for medium low uh, developer profile. Mm. So mm. like a young people. So you don't suspect about this and say, yeah. ah, that's 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 a, that's a guy working with me now. He's apprentice. He starts working with me. But actually, this guy is a hacker, mm. even expert. Right, so yeah. they start joining your team, working with you, and do any kind of things. In the meantime, this hacker he can he may be able to inject this code inside your code, right? Mm -hmm. And you actually deploy this in your solution, and you are not aware this actually is opening a reverse shell attack in your infrastructure. This is um, this is the same thing happening solar wind attack. Mm. Actually, solar wind attack was actually working like that. Okay. Someone, yeah, someone in the years, mm. they joined the team in solar wind. They stay in there. They develop for one year, two years with the oh team. My God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is what they did wow. for many years, maybe two years, three years. They study everything about uh, uh, and working with the teams internally in the mm -hmm. time what they did they actually inject the code that they need inside mm -hmm. one of the, the deployment package in SolarWind, right? Nobody mm -hmm. was aware about that. And they deployed this malicious Trojan across all the world like that. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I'm speaking about. So people ignore, you know, these kind of things where you actually deploy your code, do your things, and you are unaware that someone can actually inject malicious code, right? And do this mm -hmm. kind of attack in your company. And you are not aware about that. But more scary is uh, 
I found this other Azure technologies, like for instance, give you an idea is, that's for me, this is quite scary, is mm-hmm. think about, uh, think about uh, uh, Azure function, mm. right? Yeah. So you started, a lot of people now speaking about Azure function is so nice uh, because yes. you create this function, this code, you deploy all these things. It's very nice technology, amazing mm-hmm. technology. The problem I'm facing here is, okay, Azure Function is something that is actually able to execute code. So what's happened if um, a hacker is able to create a function and inject the code in a function, which this function is actually hosted in a uh, app service plan in the cloud, hosting mm-hmm. many other different flows, many other functions, app service, logic app, all these things. What exactly is going to happen in a situation like that? So I tried this scenario. So I developed different Azure function, logic app, app service, and I tried to inject my code in an Azure function. I execute and actually got access inside the app service container Uh, (laughs) directly. (laughs) That was kind of scary things. So think about an authorized person without any authorization Mm-hmm. It is it, it is actually able to get remote access control in your app service container mm. internally, which is actually hosting all your application inside. That's for me is uh, is something that is just blowing my mind, and that's where my studies start digging more and more and more and start thinking. All right, so let's think. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right because. Uh, if you think at this point is everything you execute in the cloud mm. is contained by something. It can be a container like Docker, or it can be at Fabric, it can be any other technology stack, but the, at the end, it's just container. Yeah. The point is, if you are able to hack a container, get access to a container, you can actually get access and hack any kind of Azure technology. Mm. or cloud technology. So the same principle, I'm speaking about Azure now because uh, uh, as a Microsoft MVP and so on, I, 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 I mean, immediately going and look inside Azure and play with Azure. Mm-hmm. But I can guarantee you, I tried this with AWS and it works because the principle is actually the same. Okay. You actually hack and get access inside the container. So... Um, one of the last things, uh, and this is something that I'm going to speak in a, in a, in a future conference, mm. it was about uh, um, trying to look about the power uh, automation, power automate. Okay. Um, that is something that for me was even more, even more dangerous because uh, when you use this kind of technology, this, we are speaking about the software as a service technology. Yeah. Where the concept is, uh, think about the concept of software as a service, insecurity. Mm. Okay, all yeah. companies, they shout in this and say, okay, you use software as a service and actually you are full secure because it's software as a service. Mm. So in software as a service, that is the principle of responsibility in the cloud, right? Yeah. If you start from infrastructure as a service, you as a customer, Mm. you have much more responsibility because yeah. there is more about the infrastructure. Platform as a service is just more shift between you as a customer and the provider, which usually can be Microsoft or Amazon or Google. Mm. Software as a service as a concept in security is like, uh, no worries, you use the software, we take care about everything. Mm-hmm. That's it. So what I try to do is... Uh, what is about uh, what about uh, uh, Power Automate? Power Automate is a concept, is a software as a service platform, mm. right? Yeah. So I'm thinking about: Is it possible to try and attack and hack Power Automate? So I start looking around and I find actually a way to execute some of my scripting technique in a Power Automate. And you know what? I've been able to get hacked and access inside a Power Automate container. That's, that's for that's me. That's bizarre. Was, yeah. That that's for me was like boom. My mind just like what what sorry what? 
So, <laughs> <laughs> we are speaking about something which is a software as a service. I don't even thinking about what. So I got access inside the container, which is actually hosting my software as a service platform. So think about how much dangerous it can yeah. be something like that. So you have a developer or someone which is actually able to execute this kind of attack in your company, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so I'm, I'm proceeding with my studies now and doing a lot of things. In, in my next conferences, I'm going to speak a lot about that. And... Um, one of the well, one of the one of the conference I, I I'm going to I'm, I'm preparing all this material. Everything is actually integrated. So mm. uh, um, yeah. I'm very I'm very affectionate about and um, passionate about integrate. Is uh, uh, it, that's a conference uh, we we created this conference. It was uh, years ago. It was uh, myself, uh, Saravana, Steve Jenwiger, Sandro Pereira. And, mm -hmm. and toward the Norgard. So mm -hmm. we five uh, people uh, years ago, we created uh, th this conference with a mm -hmm. lot of passion, everything. So I, I love this conference. So I'm, I'm very pleased to, to, to be able, you know, to just keep going and speaking in this conference. Yeah. So in this conference, I, I'm actually going to present uh, this attack and these studies and all my considerations. So this is... Uh, it's a very good opportunity. No. Yeah, 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 absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Is um mm. Is it, oh yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Yeah. So uh, having heard about all your research and stuff that you've dealt with, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I am very curious to know about, uh, like people are currently uh, having a huge uh, migration amount into Azure, right? People are drastically yeah. moving into the cloud and uh, they are designing yeah. the cloud architecture and all that. Yeah. Uh, what are the Azure uh, security stack to consider during the development in Azure? Yeah. So, um yeah, that's a very good question. Is um, I would say uh, first of all, I just read about what I just explained now and what I'm doing mm. in my research. One of the main points for me is uh, first of all, container. Mm. Uh, uh, so look about when think about. I give you some example like uh, app service. If you are using app service, you are using Azure Function, you are using Logic App, all these kind of thing. Of mm. course. Uh, good to look at the perimeter, so good to look about firewalling, all these things. That's okay. Mm. But most important, in my opinion, I, I'm not saying this is not important, the perimeter. <laughs> of course it is. You yeah. have to, okay? But uh, please don't ignore the most important things. In my idea, the most important things is by protecting the internal part of the application. So mm -hmm. I'm speaking about coding. So mm. you develop code, you do things. So you develop actually something that is going to be executed mm. at some point, right? It's going to be executed inside the cloud. You always need to think about everything I'm going to execute. It's, it's, going, to be, um, it's going to be executed by operating system, by a container, all these mm. kinds of things. So think about that all the time. So your code, it must be secure. It must be secure. Yeah. So something I recommend is about using a lot uh, uh, tools uh, like sc scanning code. Uh, I don't want to make name right now, but there are many things you can use uh, across. I, I will show this uh, during my event. Yeah. Um, sure. Something, but something you don't need, to, you don't have to ignore is. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm relating now about, uh, I don't know if you're aware about uh, the log4j attack. Okay. Something happened now mm. around, you know, they found that this uh, major vulnerability in mm -hmm. this uh, Java library is open source, actually. It's, mm -hmm. it's been used uh, 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 everywhere, everywhere across the globe, everywhere, Apache, application everywhere they're using java in this library so that's such a scary thing of course it is but, yep it is because mm -hmm. every everybody are using this library everywhere around the world that's yeah, such yeah. a scary thing but you know the first things that got in my mind immediately it was my question was wait 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 a moment we have all these fantastic scanning tool for coding everywhere around the world 
And in all this time in this year, nobody actually spotted this attack? Mm -mm. That is my main question. Why? So what I'm saying is... uh, I think one of the best practices uh, for for a developer is also using uh, uh, source code engineering. Mm. So where I would say use people because nothing better than people in my idea human. Yes. Look and use people to check your code. Mm. Look about what people are doing your code. Don't just relate or just trust a, a scanning tool like that. You know, because say, okay, I use a scanning tool and I'm okay for my code. It's not true. I can guarantee you that the, for instance, the attack I'm performing inside the inside the application, n- there is no software scanning tool able to catch my attack right now. Mm. I, can, I can guarantee you now, because it's it looks quite a normal code, to be honest. So I say. Why should be a threat to this one, right? So it's very yeah. complicated for a scanning source code tool. But for a human, not. For a human is, is actually able to understand, say, what the hell is doing this code here? Why is doing this? Why is doing that? That's not correct. This this is dangerous. This is the, I don't like this. So mm-hmm. and this is why I think it's really, really important. And other thing is important is about to protect, protect, your container protect look about where are you delivering this code all right so yeah. is your container protect yes or not mm-hmm. it is the same as you are going to rent a house you're going a house and actually in this house the landlord is not care about uh, providing you all the security measure around the close of your home so you mm-hmm. think okay just because you are in your home or wherever, or in a building, and you have your flat apartment, your building, but actually nobody is care about the security in the building. Are you really feeling safe in this building? I don't think so. Yeah. So this is exactly the same concept, right? So this, yeah. is, I think, is the most important con- consideration to do for, for a development team. Absolutely. Of course, yeah. So following up with this from your end, I would, I'm also very curious to know about something. So as you mentioned, you were able to access many of the platforms uh, when you tried during your research, right? You were shocked, you were, you were like weird kind of reactions and all. So uh, what, what was the security loophole there? What was lagging in their system so that you could access them? Uh, if it is uh, uh, shareable, you can just uh, enlighten the audience with that. It'll be very interesting for them to listen. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, so the the point is, uh, there is everything. There is something common in mm-hmm. all these technologies, all of them. And the common things in all these technologies, they they all these technologies are hosted mm. by an operating system. Mm. That's it. So if you are able to get if you are able to hack the, the lower layer, I mean, the operating system where your application is actually running, uh. then the job is done. That's it. Yeah. It looks simple, but, uh, you know, <laughs> and for me, but uh, this is actually how it works. So and this is where I think uh, uh, now just engaging now in, in more uh uh, architecture discussion here. Mm-hmm. When I think there is one of the main weakness in the cloud, because everything in the cloud is just containers, right? Mm-hmm. So if you are able to hack a container, then you get access to the technology. That's right. it. And yeah. This is how actually any cloud uh, it works. It can be Amazon, it can be Azure, it can be Google, wherever it is. But actually, the principle is actually the same. Nothing mm-hmm. change. Yeah. And this is how it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, one more question from my end is, uh, apart from the research and all that you have done, uh, so what, as a cloud security expert, what would be your recommendation or advice or any sort of uh, um, a piece of advice to the community or to the business users in real-time business? Uh, how would you advise them or how would you guide them in as a cloud mm-hmm. security expert? Um, I would say my best advice uh, um, is uh, don't ignore the security. Don't mm. ignore the security. I know many companies are just uh, committed about uh, uh, 
delivering software, delivering the solution. They, yeah. especially the high management people, they look a lot about the revenue, uh, yes, how yeah. much you know, yeah, generate this revenue, uh, how much profitable can be deploying a, or delivering a solution in a productive way. Where mm-hmm. productive, someone is being confused between you know, do things uh, easy and fast. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so this is much more profitable software instead of thinking about security. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so my my top recommendation is please don't ignore security. And uh, I would say it is very good. Uh, uh, most of the time It's just uh, having a chat, just uh, try to have a chat and in, involve some security expert. Um, mm. It doesn't need to be, you know, um, a health check or an assessment or whatever it is uh, which require a long, long time or something. Mm. Uh, I mean, even uh, as, even having a chat with a security expert and spending two, three, four days and looking about what you are doing, uh, the solution, everything, he for sure is able to give you any insight, uh, anything. Uh, uh, about what actually you can do for your security, improve your security in your solution, uh, giving you the, the the good practice, the good mindset, mm. everything you know you need to to use inside the, uh, your company and your solution. This is what I think is the best advice because uh, um, you always you 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 always need to think as a bad guy. Yeah, that that is the point. That that is the point, and this is the most crucial things. So when everything you are doing, you are developing your solution. Think about the bad guy. Think about okay, I'm doing this. I'm delivering this. I'm writing this, and and so on. Maybe I can I do that. Can a bad guy as a bad guy? Can I actually act and attack my application or my solution or even my company in this mm. way? Yes or not? If the answer is yes. Then look about the kind of attack, the kind of things that may happen. You know, maybe if there is any security concern around you, right? So yeah. there is one one of my most uh, uh, lovely attack is the um, using the Azure Stor- Storage Cloud Credential attack, which actually is uh, the way mm-hmm. where you can execute a PowerShell code uh, in your computer. Okay. So think about. Oh, and many people use PowerShell. A lot mm-hmm. of people use yeah. PowerShell. Um, when you use PowerShell, you execute, you do a login in PowerShell. Actually, PowerShell is storage, is storage, uh, the is storaging the the your uh, Azure token credential in your mm-hmm. machine. I can guarantee you, it's very easy attack to perform. So you actually you are able to pick up this uh, Azure token, impersonate the the person and the yeah. account, and then access into the cloud and create a backdoor into the cloud. It's such an easy attack, this one. How many people in the company are using uh, PowerShell, right? So a lot, a lot of them. So they completely ignore this idea. I say, well, okay, so how I can solve a problem like that? Immediately, a security expert easily can drive you and tell you, okay, use Azure Bastion. Uh, avoid using PowerShell from your laptop, uh, right? So uh, use uh, HTTPS uh, remote desktop uh, mm. access to the machine, right? There are many things that you can do actually to avoid this kind of attack. But uh, this is why I think it's so important to get advice from people that actually uh, are security experts and they actually able to, to help you very easy mm-hmm. on, on this. Yes, absolutely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, yes, you know, uh, coming to the end. So it was a very beautiful session from your end. It was very informative, thoughtful. And of course, we are uh, we are becoming more aware of what security is after this session. So you've made us understand what we should be aware of. And you also uh, pitched in the right point, like security is not just equal to the other checklist that you have. It is much more equal, much more yeah. important to the other checklist that we have. Yeah. Often, yes. uh, yeah, often organizations in the in the urge to build and in the urge to generate revenue, they of 
often forget the aspect called security or they are less concerned about that so i think hearing all the research stories from your end we feel yeah of course security is going to be something that is to be a major that is going to be a, play a major impact in our uh, business generation yeah so yeah. yes uh, we are very uh, happy to have you in ashur and we are eagerly waiting to know more about this in demonstration in the integrate yeah that would be even more exciting to look into what in depth of what it is so i also recommend all the viewers to get into integrate to to be an attendee for your session yeah yes absolutely don't miss integrate because uh in the integrate uh, mm. it will be a 100% practical session almost yeah. a zero slide so i'm going to show you in real how hackers are going to attack uh, a lot of different azure technologies and we will discuss a very interesting point about azure uh, so yeah azure architecture and cloud architecture in general and mm. how to defend yourself against this attack so of See course. you at Integrate. Covey.com.